join me in welcoming all of us and especially our uh, distinguished speakers at the inaugural session. Mr. Ravi Khanna, CEO, Solar Power Business from Aditya Villa Group. Mr. Nitesh Kumani, CFO, Avda Group. Mr. Vijayesh Gupta, CEO from Arpa Group. Mr. Vimal Jindal, VP Supply Chain Management, SoftBank Group, SP Energy. Mr. Sharain Beporta, Managing Director, IBC Solar. Mr. Amit Mehta, Vice President, Greenstone Energy Advisors. Mr. Karan Mithu, Partner, Lutra and Lutra. Mr. Kapil Maheshwari, CEO of Hinduja Renewables. Welcome and good morning. When I was approached for this session, the first reaction came that what's new? We, we are in a raw industry the last couple of quarters is dreading its view. Appreciate and acknowledge that this mounting panels all over the country doesn't really develop good for an industry in the making. So, what's new? Please hold the mic closer. <coughs> Thank you. So, so, what's new? And I guess I'll try to walk you through. 10 15 minutes of what we believe we have to do to take it to the next level. If we are to achieve the goals, which are, I guess, very ambitious and yet very worthy of a country as large as ours, there's a need, and we all need to participate to meet that need in terms of. Decentralized, again, we talk about wind and decentralized power, but I think solar has to start delivering its purpose. Right now, we'll be delivering big awards, and I guess the reaction to the big awards we will also answer. I was at Into Solar last week, and uh, after a gap of almost 12 years, one could see that this industry is now changing. The first time I saw after the Polysilicon movement, which started, I think, 12 years back. When there was a monopoly of the RECs and walkers, and when Chinese came up and said, we will put up silicon plants, and nobody believed. But there was a list of 48 Chinese guys going to make silicon, and we said, if two of them make it, this industry will just change over and look what happened. And this exactly was happening this time at Intus Solar. You must have people who hold them have seen last five, six years it was just a, you know some slow motion going on. You just go there and see my stand and come back. This is the time you realize that the era of ground mounted kind of a solar industry is over. How it integrates into a mainframe is going to be the next challenge we'll all have to accept. I don't think this challenge we can ignore. Okay, so that should become a part of what we discuss today in the next 10 to 12 minutes. I think the challenges, when we keep them in mind, they also become opportunities for growth. So I think whenever we talk about challenges, it is not the negativity of the challenge which is being presented here, but if we are able to, in a planned way, successfully convert that around into an opportunity, I think that, that's the goal we all need to take. We at Aditya Birla are very conservative, traditional people. Okay. Yet we have reached a big award in a portfolio. You know that people don't understand that gradually how corporates move. But there's a pushback now, as industry stands today. So we need to address it, and then see what's the next wave going on. Another example, which will motivate all of us to see which way solar is going. Early November, Stanford hosted an energy summit, 
and they invited people, few people from all over the world. So we went through the whole ocean. But the biggest challenge they, they were finding was totally different from what we think is the challenge of this industry. For them, they realized that if electric vehicles had to reach the number, what is being projected in 2025? How the hell are we going to manage our grid? Because as of now, that many number of cars go to a gas station, you fill in your tank and you get out at your ease, at your, you know, wish. But when you start putting that many cars in a charging mode, with no understanding of grid management, because the guy who's pump, you know, putting power to the grid and managing it, he doesn't know the behavior of people, what's going to happen at that point of time. So you're putting a trillion dollar bill to this. So the challenge there was of this kind. I guess we need to understand that solar wind, these are in a kind of mega trends. They're not going to go away. Only thing we can do is through our inefficiencies and improper management, definitely. But they are going to stay at a basket. Thermal will keep on going down. Renewables will keep on coming up. It's up to us how we plan and execute those transformational actions. I would put it in terms of three main buckets on which how we have moved. Infrastructure, financial, and technology. I guess as the minister, as the new government comes in, and we have taken the first step also with uh, the CEO forum, which works with them and every now to make sure that they get our message, uh, and we'll see what traction comes out of it. But we are beginning to see infrastructure, which is required to support solar. Now we can talk about numbers, but I think those are not important. We saw instances of plants sequentially being shut down by the storms. Sequentially. It was not one off. We see plants getting the brunt of some kind of uh, infrastructural changes in this, not this form, we get GSS level, which are not in a planned way. Transmission lines being shifted without informing or without having a developer in the loop. And these are random events which create a lot of problems as far as the commitment of that developer to the bank service. We are already running at Razor thin margins. The kind of bidding, unfortunately, we have done in the last two years is now going to have significant issues. Sector, very large. In fact, the jury is still out whether we need very large central plants or we need spread out plants for the efficacy of grid management. That jury is still out. Our discounts today are used to a central thermal power load management period. They have not seen how to integrate multiple sources of energy. The quality of our grid power, if we are going to integrate storage at a larger level it will still be okay, but if we integrate storage at a smaller level, the quality of our power is not fit enough. Now these don't come out as is easy because gradually things are moving up, but this is where all of us need to be aware that our way of looking at this industry taking next steps planning are going to be totally different from the cost-based mindset we have had on executing solar projects. 
So infrastructurally, it is not steel, it is not land. It is how you manage. Like somebody said in Germany, he said, we are done with the era of pushing an electron. That is all over. How we make that power as a part of our ecosystem, they're also talking about now, it has to be, because if SMA sells a gigawatt worth of microinverters for storage systems, and they're all managed in the cloud. Cyber security comes into picture now. So many households' data is now available almost in the public domain. So we need to start thinking where we need to go and how and what we are doing. So, so this is just to sensitize all the participants here that this is the way of revised thinking and these challenges remain, but they are a thing of the past. We have to fundamentally simplify the things, make them more robust, and then take a little paradigm shift. If this industry really we have to grow at around 10 gigawatt, all these numbers keep on floating around, but I think physically we don't have to. The way we are structured, 8 to 10 gigawatt is something we can deliver. I, I don't know. The cycle time of, of you know, bid to grid connection is around 30 months. And anything which shifts in between, you know, it, 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 so, so I guess I think I give you a sense of where we are going in terms of infrastructure and what, are, what does it take. Financing. The impact of point one, which I just mentioned, is now coming out and reflecting in the bank financing arena. Banks today are not very viable, reliable towards our industry as things stand. It is a struggle. And we can only make it better. If our performance of our plants, which we currently hold and we execute, meets their SR standard, we should, have a, we should be meeting those standards month after month for that confidence to come back. We at Aditya Birla have never given any guarantees. Okay, we are product finance so far, but we see. We see the stress in the system. And that stress is factual, fact-based. You also see how so many deals, which looks very attractive on the paper, have a problem on, on getting investments because when you make a deep dive into numbers that are different, actual numbers that are different, we need to protect them. In the banks, let me also tell you, we can't hope the government to come. Uh, Market-based industry has to be created. If you talk about this 100 gigawatt thing, it cannot happen with government help at all. It's a standalone industry. The scope of storage and PV in India, you will find, I think there's one thing, uh, this Energy Europe is going to come to India in November, I guess. There's a white paper, they're printed. They, they value the market in India to as around 300 billion dollars. Now, how we want to capture that, that kind of a market is something we need to start from how we are handling our current portfolios, how to work with grid. If you go to the power ministry, you will have a control, control panel managing all thermal plants. You are telling them that you should have a kind of a control room for large solar plants because once they go, they, the impact of that, you know, shutdown on a solar plant is so severe that it kills the company. It's not only one plant which is being impacted. So we really don't have monitoring systems in place. And when we will have this wind coming, we are not talking about offshore wind also coming into the play. And we have solar in a different shape and form coming in. I think a centralized control system, which alerts us 
to the realities of the game needs to be created. That's the new ministry come, I think. We'll have to push it. Because we cannot have, you know, a kind of a policy that no information is good information. I think we, we've gone beyond that. Technology. One large factor which we all are going to face, unfortunately, is the impact of polysilicon or polycell or polyvaporous being phased out and the industry moving to monopark and higher efficiency cells. It's still not come home here. But the industry is shutting down those lines and moving into higher efficiency in China. We are used to, fortunately, unfortunately, year over year drop in module prices for various reasons. And we brought down the tariffs to where they are. Fortunately, they, are, they seem to be now inching back. China also knows that they are oversold on their current capacity which they have created. It will take a while for them to integrate it, so they, they will pause. But the biggest goal for them is to capture the 20 gigawatt of Europe which is now going to come up. EU elections are on 26, they are, after that they want to hope, adopt this 300 gigawatt challenge formally. And with 15 to 20 gigawatt, how they put it in the market because they've also stopped fossil fuel investments. That is forcing large scale migration of capacity <coughs> from polysilicon to 325, 330. They don't now that why you want 325 watt models. It's going up. Unfortunately for us, we have brought down the US cost so low at the expense of EPC developers, say EPC levels, that if there is an advantage on cell efficiency along your pay more, we can't really harness that advantage on per watt basis. So basically what is going to happen is that capacity is going to shrink. It is not going to give any strategic importance to the large manufacturers in China. And with that thing in mind, I guess, the pricing is not going to be depressed the way we always think China will stay depressed. We are already seeing now, till quarter one of 2020, we don't see any redeeming situation in tier one. Okay, there are tier twos. That's the difference what we want to do. So, in nutshell, what the message is, we've done well. We take pride in the fact that from nowhere, we came into, we started 2010-11 in this country. We come to a level from 8 to 10 gigawatts, which is very, very significant and commendable. Mm -hmm. We have challenges on the health of those 10 to 8 gigawatts. We see issues. Certain discounts, certain governments don't pay. It's almost 10 months now. Okay, no plan. The worst part is no plan. And, and that upsets, I think, people more then the event of default. If there is a default and there is an issue or there is a plan shared with the developers of some billions, then we are in a participative mode of problem resolution. But if we are not even getting an answer as to when and how and why we are delayed and what is the plan, the investment is not going to be easy in that context. So moving forward, I think 
you will be surprised how fast the migration to decentralized power, to better management of grids through using storage for spinning and other efficiencies, I think we'll move in that direction first. We will have to have these comms upgrading themselves, otherwise we'll have problems. And then there is big investment and scenario of electric vehicles, which I guess at this stage we are not in a position. So it's our duty, our responsibility to understand that we are not in the business of pushing an electron in a ground mounted system. I think we have to be responsible enough to integrate this kind of capacity and capacity moving forward into a mainframe energy source. Because this basket of energy sources is going to be totally different in five to ten years. And at that time, we won't be able to really make those changes because they are infrastructural in nature. So with that kind of landscape refresher, I wish you guys a nice one day of, uh, I would say, learning, sharing, <coughs> and hopefully going out and then working on industry, which is going to be very critical for this nation. Thank you. Well, let me summarize. He covered quite important points on infra financial and technology uh, given the sector, and also summarized by saying that issues relating to payment receivable cycle it does exist and the plan to overcome those issues doesn't exist. So that's the major problem uh, IPPs could face uh, given the situation right now. And also uh, how China-India equation on solar panel is panning out and uh, what benefits we could get going forward were we enjoying those benefits. So without taking long, I guess you might you guys might have all enjoyed his keynote address. And let me tell you that uh, today being a very special day for me because I am seeing a whole galaxy of star coming on the dais. And more so ever, it's not on the knowledge of the dais, which looks quite interesting. Even on the audience, I could see uh, there, there is a humongous amount of knowledge which over the session, if we can share with each other, that will be that will take it and make it a little more interesting.